Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you how we we'll organize our food in the pantry and we also have a second pantry which we call the larder just to differentiate between the two. So if you want to see how I keep everything organized and accessible just keep watching. So this is the pantry. It's in the corner of the kitchen. It's pretty tall and it has a bifold door which let me show you with the door open. That's how it looks with the door open. Just a quick overview and then I'll take you shelf by shelf and show you what's in there. Before I show you the top shelf, I'll just show you how tall it is. I can comfortably reach all of these containers on the second from top shelf, but the top one I need to get a chair to stand on to access anything up there. Okay, so this is the top shelf and on here I keep I have a vase, a jug, and then my entertaining dishes and cake stands and things like that. I kind of have an obsession with divided dishes, so I have quite a few there. On the second shelf, uh, I'll just show you this quickly. This is just one of those self-releasing hooks, um, and I have a fabric tube that I sewed with elastic at the top and bottom, and that just has plastic bags in it. Right, so here, these containers are, I got them at the warehouse, they uh, are by Cuisine Queen and they're all BPA free plastic. So we have vitamins and supplements, children's medicine, allergy and asthma, adults medicine, cupcake cases, regular and mini. Um, I need to do a label for there but I'm having computer issues so I don't have that program. Um, but that's icing sugar, fondant. Um, this is baking supplies and in there I have flavorings which are written on the top what they are for example almond coconut lemon um, I have some sprinkles and uh, what else royal icing at the back I just have two empty jars of baking soda and baking powder so that's handy to just pull that out onto the counter when I'm baking in the corner I used to have things like my potato ricer and things I used less frequently I'll link to the blog post below where I talked about everything in the pantry and there's photographs and more information there but I've actually started packing so because we're planning on moving um, so those items are packed but I just have some divided dishes and trays and then these are the super fat look how thick they are super fat straws that we use for our smoothies over here I have another basket and that has my larger cookie cutters and sets um, like these are sets of cutters. The next shelf down has sugar, brown sugar, plain flour, self-raising flour, bread flour, which I used to make pizza crust, rice pasta, uh, gluten-free pasta, oatmeal. In the corner I have gluten-free mix and then all different rices, brown rice, basmati rice, white rice and um, arborea rice. So all the rices, um, I have a cereal beverage and those are hot chocolate sachets. Um, this is a container from Sistema. I've just stashed the lid somewhere else and pulled the little clippy bits off. So this holds hot drinks. So this is easy to just pull out when I have guests and want to offer them something to drink or if I want something to drink. Um, actually, I'll pull it out and show you now. Ooh. So we have Ovaltine. These are coffee sachets. We don't drink coffee and tea, but it's nice to offer guests. I have friends and family who enjoy coffee, so I don't mind offering it to them. Um, this is hot chocolate, peppermint tea, chamomile, ginger kiss, strawberry pavlova berry tea, vanilla rooibos, rooibos, and black tea for our guests. And this is just uh, lemon meringue pie tea. I like teas because I make them up and um, let them cool, and then I have that as an alternative to water. These are just jam jars that I've pulled the label off and then used my label maker to make the label for the top. Just refilming this clip because it went corrupt in case you're wondering where my nail polish went. Uh, next shelf down we have mini chopping boards. This container is from Ikea and in there I have spreads uh, like chocolate spread, peanut butter, syrup, honey, that sort of thing. Right, these containers, they there's two, but it's easy to access the one behind. You just pull the one in front out. I need to put a label on there that's coconut. Um, so chocolate chips, crackers, coconut, almond flour, muesli, coconut flour, 
cocoa and tapioca starch and you can kind of see through to the label behind but I just remember what's there anyway. In the corner I have this round tray from the warehouse and in there I have sweet potatoes, potatoes and at the moment butternut, those kind of root vegetables and squashes. Um, on the side I have large chopping boards and an ice cream tub with my daily meds that I have to take and on them I put a sun or a moon so when I'm filling up my pearl containers for the week I know which ones to grab. So the shelf down I have a plate stacking rack and that has um, digital scale and then the new Weight Watcher scale and the old Weight Watcher scale because I used to do Weight Watchers. I should probably just sell those. Um, another round tray for onions and garlic. And then I have these little baskets and in them I have, these are just aioli jars, I haven't even taken the labels off. So I have nuts, quinoa, dark chocolate and coconut sugar, just things that I'll access fairly often. At the back we have vinegars, so white vinegar, malt vinegar and um, apple cider vinegar. Right, a little overview of the shelf. This cupcake has sugar in. Um, this is for bread and rolls. Uh, this is for cereal, which they just, I just put a clip on and the packet just goes near the box, gets tossed. Uh, wheat bix this is actually made for wheat bix so our whole pack fits in there perfectly. And I like to have some free space so the kids can put their cereal bowl there when they're dishing up or, or else I put containers of the latest um, batch of baked goods there, cookies or whatever I've baked. So we have the bottom shelves. This has a bit of an overhang here. Um, so in there I just keep things I use very seldom. Those are um, various gluten-free flours that I, I was using to make a gluten-free flour mix. So, um, you know, glutinous rice flour and white rice flour and brown rice flour and whatever else. In the front here I have jars of stock cubes, chicken and beef. I have gravy powder in there and corn flour. Uh, we have another basket there for bags of chips that are opened. We just use these clips. This is a huge catering pack of um, cling film. It's lasted forever, but it's really handy to just pull that out when I'm doing the lunches and pop it back in there. And then this box holds baking paper and Ziploc bags and other packaging bits and pieces. In the corner, I have oven mitts and I had my spare aprons there. I'll show you where the rest of my aprons go, but they're packed at the moment. And then we have instant noodles, which is, they're not very healthy. So I get them occasionally, but the kids love them. Okay, so one shelf down. Um, in the front, I have our panini press, which we use all the time. So that's handy to just grab. The kids can just help themselves. Um, on the right, I have oils and vinegars. So I use balsamic vinegar and olive oil often, so that's in the front. And then I have canola oil and sesame oil at the back. I've used cardboard um, egg carton lids, I just cut this one to fit, and I put the oils on there because if they drip then the cardboard will absorb the oil and I can just replace it. That is some supplement that Grant takes, I don't know, creatine powder or something. Stand mixer, uh, in the back corner I usually have square platters, but I've lent them to somebody. And then here's my crock pot that I use most often. Oh, and that silver thing is a recipe stand, a recipe book stand. So I'll just put that back. So that's the whole of the pantry, and that's where I store dry goods and spreads and cereals and bread and things that we use all the time. So that's in the kitchen and I can access it easily. And now I'll show you the larder, which is where we store backup items and tin goods. This little vestibule is near the kitchen. Uh, we have the back door just across there. Oh, and loads of laundry. And this door here holds a cupboard that was so disgusting when we moved in. I'll insert pictures here to show you how it looked. It was so gross and when we asked the agent about it they said it's always looked that way and they're not going to clean it out. So I cleaned it out and I painted it and we added shelves. So this is the larder. Quick overview. 
And on the back of the door, I put some hooks from the dollar store and I hang my aprons there. So that's a handy spot and they're out of the way. Um, so the top shelf that Grant added for me, I have um, just spare dry goods that I don't use very frequently and canned goods. There's some chutneys and jams that I've made. And we have some ice cream cones up there as well. And the next shelf down, I have backup flowers. I like to have goods in the pantry or in the fridge and then a backup item in the larder. So when I'm busy baking, I reach for the flour. Maybe there's not enough in there. I know I've got a backup in the larder and I'm never going to run out. So when this one gets taken into the pantry and tipped into that bin, I'll buy a backup one the next time I go shopping. So it's less urgent and I know I always have something. Uh, crackers, salt, oats, herbs and spices, jam setting, sugar for when I make jam. That's kind of ancient. In the corner here, uh, we had pancake mixes and these pasta dishes and things for us to go camping with. I usually make pancakes from scratch, but the mixes are handy for camping. Um, okay, let me just back up a little bit. Okay, that corner at the top. So we have chips in the front and then the back. Oh, let me take these out. I have a little rack that I got, I thrifted that somewhere. So we have tissues under there and on top I have cereal and oats and yeah, that's just cereal and muesli. And then we have a backup cleaning spray that I use to clean the counters and pretty much everything. Okay, coming down, on the right here, I got this little rack for, I think it was 50 cents at the, the op shop uh, thrift store. And in there I've got packets, so we have popcorn, and soup mixes that I use to make dip and these are drink mixes and then some custard powder Whew, getting out of breath okay um, two little hanging baskets also from the dollar store so this one holds random dessert bits and pieces custard powder and I've got some liquid glucose and tartaric acid and just strange things like that that I use very infrequently um, here I've got little sachets that I'm stashing away ketchup and whatever because that's also handy to take camping and some dried fruit for cake okay canned goods and things like aioli and mayonnaise all go there this is actually clean it's just stained okay moving around these little racks I got at a dollar store and they stack really nicely so there's all of our tinned fruit underneath it I have a basket and in there is just random extras like yeast and vanilla extract and stock cubes and things like that there's some pizza sauce I have another stacking rack well not a stacking rack like a stepped rack and that holds more backup items so I have an olive oil in the pantry that I'm using and then I have a backup for when that runs out um, white vinegar syrups that kind of thing Okay, over here I have one of those little plastic drawer sets and on top I have backup cooking paper and cling wrap and sandwich bags. The top drawer has packaging. So these, they like, um, they kind of like shower caps but they're really handy for putting over bowls when you've got leftovers in the fridge. And I have um, preserving jar lids and Ziploc bags, things like that. Whoops. Next one down has packets, so I have a bit of milk powder. I used that for, I think I actually used that for a bath salt mix or something. It was like a bath milk, anyway. Um, cinnamon sticks, I've got some lentils. So anything that doesn't fit into the jar, the extra will go into there. It's the same with the herbs and spices. What doesn't fit into my spice jars in the kitchen, the extra is going to there. Next one down has light bulbs, and then the bottom one has my little tiny fondant and cookie cutters. So that's easy just to rummage through. Okay, the bottom. This has like a, a metal plating on the walls, it's kind of strange. We put in this vinyl, because I found that somebody was chucking it out, so I was like, yes please. These tubs are from Ikea, and I think in total we have 53 of them. We use them for everything. They are perfect for storing, for laundry, for when we go grocery shopping. We put the food into that in the boot, because our grocery store doesn't do bags. Um, so we just have this 
stack that we always reach for. That's where we store them. Um, behind that, I have these little plastic shelves. It's actually one tall shelf unit, just one of those garage shelf units that I split up. So the top one has um, swimming towels and in there is also things we'll take to the beach. Bug spray, talcum powder to get the sand off our feet and sunscreens. So we can just chuck that into the car when we go to the beach. And below that is the TOGS box. TOGS equals swimsuits. That's what they're called here in New Zealand. So we have um, rash vests and swimsuits and hats and things in there. So when we go to the beach, we'll pull that out. Everyone will have a rummage, grab what they want and put the rest back there. So that's just a handy place to stash it. Moving on. Okay, in the corner I have the bread machine, which I don't use all that often. And then my husband's protein powders, which he buys in bulk. Uh, and the bottom there, I have a container that is full of rice and pasta and noodles. And then that one is full of sugar. So that's backup sugar, icing sugar, brown sugar, caster sugar, whatever. Um, and then in the corner we have a jar of oh, spaghetti. It's handy to grab. And that's just a bottle of fizzy grape juice. So that is the larder and where we store the rest of our food. Here is where we store our fruit and eggs. I know the eggs are going to get people twitching. In New Zealand they don't rinse the eggs so they still have the protective coating on so they can be stored out of the fridge. And I saw those in this little chicken wire basket that I made. I'll leave a link below to the blog post showing how I made that. And then I have a wicker basket which I thrifted and that just has fruit and then I screwed a hook under the cabinets and used some S hooks from the dollar store to hang bananas. And then over here we have extra bananas and this little basket which I also thrifted has avocados. So any extra fruit or produce goes on those shelves there until we use it. I hope you enjoyed that little peek into our pantry and larder and how it's organized. If you have any questions just leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.